Hey you guys, it's me B. Riley. You can find my name over there floating on a circle and welcome back to the channel. Luckily this week we're going to be getting back to more project based stuff and we are going to start cracking on with our 1965 uh, Fender Jaguar. This is an original guitar that I picked up off of an auction site a couple months ago. It had been refinished back during the uh, mid 1970s according to the previous owner. Today we're going to focus on disassembling this thing, uh, starting to get a paintable prepped surface, and uh, you know getting a little further into the mysteries of this thing because the previous owner had gotten it from his father and his father had bought it around 1980 and then gave it to him and it just kind of sat in a case. So essentially from about 1980 to now this thing's basically been mothballed and it had a lot of life happen to it before it hit that point. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Okay, so as was previously mentioned in uh, the videos that came before, uh, this guitar was sold to me by a gentleman who had received it from his father as a, as a gift. And his father had bought it in 1980 when he was a young man. And when he had bought it, uh, he basically mothballed it. He played it around the house and everything, but judging by the condition, it looked like it was played from, you know, 80, 85, maybe 90 latest, and then just kind of shelved right off the bat. So there's a lot of repairs that are going to have to come in uh, along with the refinish on this, along with a basic restoration to kind of get it back up and running. But the one thing that we do start to find as we start to get further into this body is, is that, you know, there are tons of sections where there's paint just scratched off, kind of like almost like a like they were testing to see if the paint, the factory paint had been left intact underneath the spray paint. Uh, so what that tells us is, is that the, this gentleman's father who had owned it from 1980 on, uh, was not the person who refinished this because if they were, either the father or the son wouldn't go digging on, you know, uh, hidden patches of paint on this body to see if the Olympic white was still residing underneath. Now, as was mentioned in the previous video, we could theoretically wet sand this and buff it back. And I'm tempted to just try a patch of it just to see how it comes out to kind of show you what you can do with some pretty bad paint if you really want to hang on to it, if you really want to keep uh, that paint on there, whether it be rattle can, spray paint, metallic blue or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock this fade off, which was definitely done later on. Um, I'm going to knock this fade off uh, with a bit of um, some scotch Bright pad. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet sand just this patch and polish just this patch and show you guys what you can do with rattle can paint if you're willing to take some time, wet sand and polish back. Okay, so obviously I spent a bit of time, as you can see, kind of cutting paint and uh, doing a quick buff on the shoulder of the Jag. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you real quick what we've got going on. And I've already started dismantling some other things, so please forgive if I'm holding everything together with my hands. Uh, but essentially, here's what we've got. And if you look at the reflectivity on that, it's not particularly terrible. I've taken it up to 2000 grit, and already it's starting to show a bit of shine, so that's kind of nice. Uh, the only problem is, is that, um, you know, that's not what we're actually going to wind up doing. We're going to do a full refinish. I really just wanted to see if we could bring the paint back. So if you do have a guitar at your house uh, that has, uh, for all intents and purposes, essentially... Uh, the paint is, is starting to degrade or break down or, or it's got really weird levels where the reflectivity is really not very good, uh, then you can do that. You know, you can hit it with, say, 800 up to 15, up to 2,000 and 3,000 wet dry, and then you hit it with a bit of po uh, polishing compound, uh, you know, from, from Napa or O'Reilly's or whatever, and you will be able to get that shine and that depth and that, uh, that glassy surface back. Uh, but that was just for an argument's sake. So we took a minute, we did that. If you've got something the, at the house where you want to do that, you want to do a clean, uh, you know, clean the paint up, essentially, you can wet sand it with two or 3,000 uh, wet dry. And if you're careful and keep the swirls out of the, out, of the, uh, out of the mix and keep the paper clean, you know, keep the rag clean, make sure the surface doesn't have any particulates that break loose. So essentially a lot of the quality of the finish is going to come down to after you've painted it after it's already been done and it's already in color and this part's going to make you want to throw up a little bit you're going to have to take some sandpaper to that perfect freshly painted surface and you're going to have to start sanding and when it comes to colors like red or blue or green 
you lose all the depth when you have that uh, that gloss gone, when you have that top coat knocked matte, all of a sudden the color starts to look very not flattering. So don't panic, just keep rolling until you get up to about 3000 grit, then buff it back, make sure you're not burning through the finish, make sure you're not making it too thin, and then you can kind of stand back with your arms folded and decide whether or not that worked for you. So, all right, anyway, let's go ahead and start taking this thing apart because right now, even though there's no watch on my wrist, sorry about that. Uh, I have about two days to get this thing all together and get it going before my responsibilities start to kick back in. So let's go ahead and get to work. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the jack plates off this and we're actually gonna leave the electrics in. Now, I don't typically do this. When I'm doing a refinish, I usually pull everything apart, but the electrics in this guitar are pretty ornate and there are no relief channels in this. So there's no lifting the loom out. You have to basically unwire everything from itself to the point where every pot and switch be taken apart. A lot of these slider switches are already gonna to have to be replaced or cleaned. Um, so I'm a little reluctant to start ripping them all apart and I'm fairly confident in my abilities that uh, whoever looks at this refinish later on would not be aware that the electronics were left in during the respray. We're gonna make sure that all the wires are free of any overspray uh, and that it doesn't look like that, you know, like when people just spray paint things and leave it alone. Uh, I'm sure I'll catch a little bit of flack for that, but I'm also sure that if you wait to the end of the video, you'll see that the results were not impeded at all by this decision. It's just me trying to make sure that uh, everything goes back exactly as it was before and uh, trying to keep the originality in hand. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a moment and take a look at this. One thing that you can find no shortage of are modified bridges for Jags and for Jazz Masters. And the reason is, is because the conventional bridge uses this style, which is threaded. So essentially what you are banking on is you're banking on the tension of the string to choose a groove that works for them. And I get that. Good for you, string. The only problem is, is that with all of these grooves on these threaded posts, that if you play heavy, the distance between the tailpiece and the bridge is too great and provides too large amounts of, of an easy fluctuation of the string. So if you have, say, your low E, we'll start wearing a groove into these notches, and then when you play, it'll skip over those grooves, and the geometry of the note goes wrong, or it'll go sharp, or it'll go flat if it goes back into a resting sta uh, space. And also, those grooves and the lack of surface area in which the string contacts uh, does accelerate the process in which these start to get irregular grooves. So one of the fixes that you can actually do is you can replace it with one of these, which is a standard bridge that goes on a Mustang. So what they've done with this, because the Mustang was developed later on, they started to realize that they were picking up buzzing issues in the bridge, and they started to get to the point where those strings were skipping grooves. So one big upgrade for these guys is the Mustang style bridge, where you just have a cast barrel, and then a proportionately grooved uh, seat for the string. I'm going to show you what came on this in case you haven't seen episode one. And that's what actually came on it. And it is a Gibson harmonica bridge from about 1975, 1976. It's heavy. Uh, it weighs a ton. And it is an infinitely more adjustable bridge than the original bridge would be. But we're going to have to replace that. And in order to replace that, the number one thing that we've got to do right here is we got to get rid of these guys. Now these are slightly wider which I wager means that I'm going to have to be doing some wood filling today. Um, but we're going to see if maybe we can actually get away with using the same hole. And the reason that we're going to replace them instead of just throwing the new bridge right in there, that these posts, there's no steel core right there. That's wood. So what that means is, is that if you're using a bridge that doesn't actually have adjustable screws that drop into this, to, uh, you will instead have the pin that is prevalent to the back of these, and this little guy is going to start pushing into the wood with the force of all six strings upon it, and it's going to start digging in. There's a very good possibility that if they had drilled into these to bore these out to fit these slightly larger pieces, uh, and they left it uh, where it wasn't a blind hole, where it actually does protrude to the wood, 
there's a possibility that you could actually blow this bridge right out the back of the guitar because you're going to have a couple hundred pounds of pressure pushing down on this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this little guy, the handy little dude. He goes on the side of my grinding uh, disc, my flap wheel disc, and I'm going to just screw this down and in. And I'm going to see if I can work this out by hand. Or what you can do, if this doesn't work and if you're working it out by hand and it seems to be a nuisance, uh, you can take this device, which is, what, it, like I said again, it's just an extra handle that goes on the uh, side of my Ryobi uh, angle grinder, and you can put a socket right over the top of this, uh, you know, like a half-inch socket. So you put the half-inch socket over it, and then you screw that in on top of it, and as you're screwing it down, the top of this uh, handle, the plastic, will contact the socket, and screwing it down will slowly draw it up and out of the body. Gotcha. I'm actually kind of amazed that that came out so easily because, uh, you know, typically things that have been in place for 30 or 40 years, they're not so uh, willing to let go. How do I know that? Well, because I still listen to the mamas and the papas. And they're awesome. And if you don't think so, well, whatever. Pardon the noise. Come on, baby. Come on. Get there. Be a pal. Yeah? Oh, maybe? No? Yeah? Okay. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, we're just one step closer to being factory correct. Okay, so here's a great trick if you want to go ahead and uh, fill in some pickguard uh, screw holes. And the reason I'm filling in the pickguard screw holes on this guitar, I'm not filling in all of them because some of them are steel. But this has a nitrate guard, and nitrate, as pretty as it is, is kind of unstable. So what happens is 50 years later, the nitrate starts to shrink, and the pickguard screws all start to get pulled towards the center. Um... This results in a lot of stress being on the pick guard. It'll start rolling up at the edges because it's uh, it's being pulled up and out of the screw holes uh, and it can crack and break and those are really expensive. So what I'm electing to do here is a little trick I learned with toothpick and some type bond wood glue. You simply drop the toothpick down into the type bond, drop it down into the pick guard screw hole. And then what you do is you fill the hole with a little bit of glue, so this way it's got something to really jam it in there. And then as soon as you drop the toothpick in, simply push back, forward, left, and right. And then remove the excess of the pick and use the end that's just come away, which should still have some glue on it, to kind of dab the glue over the top of the toothpick to close the pores up and create a sandable surface so that when you do sand it, you'll have a nice flush uh, surface that you can drill into then. Um, and this will alleviate a lot of stress on the nitrate guard because now those pick guard screws aren't going to be pulling it all outward while the guard pulls inward. Instead, you've kind of uh, 
made a concession. You know, you've you've made it basically where the pick guard is not going to be stressed out. Sure, the screw holes have been redrilled, but at this point, it's either that or you crack the pick guard or you start to strip out those screw holes because those screws are not going straight down and in anymore. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so we've got a bit of time since the base code has kicked off, and I've just pulled the tape, and what you can see is, is by the method of the way that I was taping is, is that there's a little bit of an edge there, uh, right there, uh, where the finish had time to react, but that is as bad as it gets, and that's going to come out wet sanding, and what we've had is, uh, the electronics are still there, and we have completely maintained the the remnants of the old Olympic white, and underneath that, the remnants of the sunburst finish that this actually came with first, because we have deduced that this actually was a factory respray, and we know that because as we are looking at the heel, what we see is we see the remnants of the Olympic white that is resting um, underneath the finish there. It's obvious that when they sanded the guitar, they sanded it down to bare wood, but they did not sand the neck heel because getting a power sander in there is a bit of a nuisance. So what we have is we have the remnants of our Olympic white right there, and you can see it along that front edge. And I've scraped this all away, and this is that automotive primer that's just above it. And then I've left the initials that were scratched in by uh, the previous owner just because uh, it didn't feel good removing that. And then over here, we've got the remnants of the sunburst finish underneath. So this was an Olympic white over sunburst guitar uh, that was then refinished again. And you can see that as you kind of look around the guitar, you can notice that as you're looking across the sanded finish, there are remnants of yellow in the pores of the wood. <laughs>
All right, you guys, uh, believe it or not, we are actually out of time for this video. We did not get to get far enough along. We're going to be close to done, but that's okay because we still got some stuff left on this. So if you're looking to review where this guitar started off, feel free to drop into the first videos. The first video up is the one that's actually the teardown video, and it goes over all the things that this particular guitar had wrong with it upon the moment that it came in. And essentially, you know what? I'm gonna be honest. I am totally okay with where this guitar has gone so far. I mean, obviously we've got wear patterns in it and we've got knocks and bruises. I kind of like those on a guitar like this. Um, we're not trying to make it look perfect. Even if we did, it, it wouldn't work because the chrome has pitting on it and the pickguard, even though I've, you know, kind of wet sanded it and buffed it back, we've got oxidation on the screws and things like that. So essentially what we're trying to do here is uh, we're trying to create a guitar in which conceptually it all matches and kind of looks like it's been together the whole time. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys for this week's video. Really appreciate you guys dropping in and checking out the vids. I hope you guys get something from it. If you have any questions pertaining to the project, feel free to chuck them in there down below or if you have a better way to do it. Like I was saying earlier in the video, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And there's probably 50 or 60 different ways in which we're going to have people who are watching this video saying, I would have done it different, or typically I do it differently. And I can totally respect and appreciate that. The basic thing that I'm looking at as far as these videos go is, is that, uh, you know, we've got a two-way street here. This isn't network television. So if you've got some great ideas, go ahead and drop them down into the comments section. And uh, hopefully some of the ideas that I had chucked across the table are something that you can use during, uh, you know, your work back at home. Or if you're just out on a session or if you're at the studio and you need to do some quick repair work. Anyway, I will see you guys later. Have a beautiful afternoon. For those of you who have already subscribed, thank you a great deal. I really appreciate the support. And if you haven't subscribed, you might want to consider it because I've got a lot of content that's going to be coming your way with this sort of stuff. This is just what I do. I'm not really changing much. I just decided to set up a camera. Anyway, thanks a bunch. Have a beautiful afternoon and do enjoy your day. I know I am. I'm going to keep putting this thing together. <laughs> this thing is, you know what? I was a little on the fence at first. I'm going to be honest. I didn't know if I was really pleased with the way the paint turned out. There were areas where um, getting the grain to have the same amount of prominence was very difficult because you're doing with a translucent finish. Uh, but I really like this. There's a little bit of the wood grain showing through the actual texture where the pores have had a chance to drink up some of the lacquer. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think this guitar is just a hell of a lot happier now than it was before. Anyway, I will see you guys later and tune in next week.